today I'm going to turn one of my favorite D&D monsters, the Frog Hemoth, into one of my favorite Pokemon starters, Venusaur. Let's evolve this thing. All of my local game stores were sold out of Frog Hemoth minis, so I had to sacrifice my own for this project. The paint job on this guy was pretty decent, but we're gonna have to get rid of that before we start. I recently got a chance to use this guy in a home game, so I feel okay wrecking it. But in general, I have no problems doing this. I feel like you're either an Andy, or you're a Sid. To strip the paint away, I waterboarded him in some isopropyl alcohol. <laughs> And of course, I didn't have enough. But I had a plan. I filled the negative space with these glass nuggets I found on the ground. But I ran out of those too. So I used some rocks, an angry bird, a metal cube, and it still wasn't enough. It's probably the way to go. So I did that. And it covered most of the mini. It's just gonna have to be good enough. I let that stew overnight and the next day I started brushing the paint away. Everyone knows after a bath you've gotta brush your teeth. Eventually with some vigorous scrubbing the paint came off. Now that the paint was removed, I could take the mini off the base, but like the paint, this thing did not want to come off. I snipped, I sawed, I sliced it, I got fed up and I ripped off the tentacles to get a better angle. Finally, with help from my heat gun, I softened the plastic enough to remove the mini from the base, but I destroyed the base in the process. Then I removed the arm tentacles. These were also a pain to get off. But fortunately, the tongue and the eyes came off much easier. And with that, you can start to see how this thing could possibly become a Venusaur. Next, I removed the stubs left behind from the tentacles. and the back toes. And with that, the mini is finally ready for sculpting. I'm gonna be going back and forth between green stuff and milliput for this project. This is my first time using milliput, but I love this stuff. It is everything I want green stuff to be, and I've only ever seen it used to fill gaps. I started by using the milliput to, well, fill gaps. Then using a texture roller from my Goblin Dragon video, rolled on some warty, scaly texture. The Frog Hemoth is a little more fit than Venusaur, so I rounded out his belly with more Milliput. When I removed the tongue from the mouth, it created a gap in the jaw, so I filled this gap with green stuff. Then I carefully segmented it into sections to create the teeth. At this scale, I find it easier to sculpt the teeth rather than add them in individually. Next, I started sculpting a new tongue. I made a rough tongue shape out of green stuff, and then textured it by hitting it with a fish. Then I took my tongue and shoved it down the frog's throat, just smushing it around until it fit.
I didn't like the look of these gaps, so I filled them in with green stuff. Next I cut off the tip of his toes, to make room for claws later on. I poked some holes into the shoulder to house some armature wire, then super glued the wire in place, securing the joints with green stuff. Once the green stuff was cured, I trimmed and posed the wire into a leggy position. To save on materials, I bulked out the armature with some aluminum foil. Then began sculpting with Milliput. This is where I really fell in love with the stuff. Wish you knew how much I loved your legs. I wanted to give him some appropriately chunky Venusaur arms. I textured the arms with the same roller I used before, and with that, he's looking hilarious. I let the milliput cure before I started on the feet. I knew I would mess up the arms if I tried sculpting while the milliput was still soft. I carved away any bits I didn't want with a blade, covered that exposed tinfoil with green stuff, then started on the long and boring process of sculpting toes. I made sure to maintain the same level of detail on each toe. Once I was done, I placed my monstrosity on the table to make sure the toes were posed correctly. Then it was time to bulk out those back hips. I started with the rough muscle shapes, then blended them in. Then added texture to match the rest of the body. Then it was time to add Venusaur's pronounced warts. I took Milliput, rolled them into balls, squished them in place, and then blended them in. This was fun. Now this frog needs a log. I softened the plastic with my heat gun, and then poked a hole with a nail. That nail will be the trunk's armature. Then I bulked out that armature with more aluminum foil. I started by making a nice skin flap, and I switched to Sculpey for this step because this piece could be removed, and Sculpey is a little cheaper than green stuff. Once the Sculpey was textured, I cut out some scale-like shapes. Starting from the top, I placed these scales onto the armature. I did this over and over again until I got a palm tree-like texture. This looked bad until the very end. Sometimes you've got to trust the process. Once it was done, I took it out of his back and baked it in the oven. Once that was baked and in place, I began working on the face. These cheeks needed to be significantly chubbier, so I bulked them out with some more Milliput. Once the cheeks were looking cheeky, I poked some holes for breathing purposes. Then squished on some balls to make some froggy eyes. I'm going for a slightly more realistic Venusaur face, trying to match the style of the frog hemoth. Once the face was cured, I gave our tree frog his signature kitty cat ears. Next I started sculpting the tree topper. I interpreted this as kind of a sunflower shape. Once I roughed out the shape, I placed it on top of the tree. Wow, that looks like trash. Better fix it off camera. Once the topper was cured, I glued that whole section in place and blended it in with more Milliput. 
Now this friend needs some foliage. Here's a quick flower drawing tutorial. Start with a circle. Then add the flower details. Wow. Flip that over and use it as a template. I squished green stuff onto the parchment paper and then formed it into petal shapes. Those turned out sloppier than I wanted, so I cleaned the edges with a blade. And cut out the iconic slits. Then to give it a more succulent-like texture, I stippled on some black Mod Podge. Now it's time to leaf. I needed these to be thin but sturdy, so I used some plastic from this cat litter container. It had a cool texture that I thought would make the leaves a bit more interesting. Using a template, I cut four almost identical leaves. Then, using a heat gun, folded them in half, and then gave them a more leaf-like curve. Then I cut out the leaf slits. To add a bit more detail, I scored in some lines. Then glued in a stem made of armature wire. Aluminum wire is really flexible, which also means it's really squishable. Using some pliers, I squished the tip of the wire. This blends it into the leaf shape a little bit better. And it wouldn't be Venusaur without his signature vine whips. Luckily, I have something that will work perfectly as these vines. The tentacles from earlier. Using some milliput, I stuck some balls onto the tips of the tentacles, and then carved an X into them. That's really it. Now it's time to put it all together, starting with the tentacles. I attached these in place using superglue, then added more superglue and baking soda. This creates a stronger bond, but also helps fill in any gaps. Then I added this cute little Totoro leaf using the same method. Followed by the rest of the leaves. And finally, the flower petals. But I still wasn't happy with the texture of the petals, especially with the super glue welding marks left behind. So I brought out the big guns, modeling paste. I watered down the modeling paste and then stippled it on with a sponge. This looked so much better. And with that, it's done and ready to prime. Quick break to tell you that I have a Patreon now. I love making these videos, but minis and materials are expensive, not to mention the time it takes to make the videos. If you like my videos and you want to help me keep making them, please consider joining. You'll get your name in all my future videos, access to bonus content, polls to help me decide what to make next, and a chance to win this mini. That's right, I'm going to be giving this Venusaur away to one of my patrons. All you need to do is be a patron and comment on the post what you would name this Venusaur. I'll pick my favorite and then send the winner this mini. All right, that's it, back to the video. I started by painting the areas that were hardest to reach. I gave the mouth a dark red base coat, then painted the inside of the gums pink. Finally, I created a gradient of red to black on the inside of the mouth. Next, I gave the trunk a base coat of brown. Then gave it a wash with Agrax Earthshade. This helped bring out all the details I sculpted earlier. Then finished it off with a tan dry brush. And I followed the same process for the inside of the sunflower. I gave the gums a scary red base coat and painted the tongue pink. Then I started adding the teal for the body. <laughs> what is that? This took a while. Next I gave the eyes their first coat of white. and 
and darkened the nostrils with some dark blue. Once the body was done, I gave the leaves a green base coat. And yes, I probably should have painted the leaves before adding them to the mini. Painting the underside of these leaves was very annoying. The vines were painted a slightly darker green than the leaves. And the petals were painted pink. Finally, the sunflower crown was painted yellow. And with that, the base coat is done. Oh, it looks so good. Thank Arceus. Now it's time for tooths. I carefully added white to the tooths, trying not to ruin the gum shading I did. This looked hilarious. I know Venusaur only has a couple of teeth, but I kept those pearly whites intact because it was just too funny. Now that his teeth have been bleached, he needs a manicure. I gave his toes a white base coat, then gave them a brown wash off camera. Then I moved on to the eyes. I had to go with Venusaur's classic cartoony red eyes. So I put on some insane looking red dots. Slowly building out until it looked a little less insane. I gave him a black pupil and his signature twinkle. I did a pink wash on the inside of the ears, slowly building up color because I wanted some of the teal to show through. Then I began shading. I gave the underbelly a darker, bluer color to act as a pre-shade. Then I went in with an almost black blue in the recesses because I tend to undershade. This gave me a good base to work from. Once I was happy with the shading, I went in and highlighted the warts individually with a lighter teal. I gave the petals a pink gradient to make them look a little more interesting, and then added a lighter dry brush to bring out that texture. Then as a final detail, added those signature spots. With that, the mini is complete, but he needs something to stand on. Now I was planning on doing a more elaborate base for this thing, but when I did a placement test earlier, it took up almost the entire thing. So I decided to go for a simple forest floor instead. To make the ground texture, I used some modeling paste mixed with cat litter. I gave that a coat of black Mod Podge to seal it all in. Then I gave it a brown base coat followed by progressively lighter dry brushes. Next I put down some white glue. and sprinkled on some homemade flock. I hated the way this looked, so I sprinkled a different mossy flock on top, which looked a lot better, so I sealed it in with some watered down Mod Podge and isopropyl alcohol. I touched up the muddy areas with some brown paint before adding a few little rocks. I place the rocks almost exactly an inch away from each other. This makes a grid-like appearance and makes it look way less organic. When emulating organic arrangements like rocks or stars, try clustering some very close together and then placing others further than you would naturally. This will make it look more random. Before adding the finishing touches, I glued the Venusaur in place. I used more super glue and baking soda to create a stronger bond and then painted that brown to look like mud. Then I added some tufts of grass that I made out of an old paintbrush, some pink sponge flowers, and as one final touch, I took this small pearly sphere out of my bits box, added a tiny green stuff circle to the center, then painted the whole thing white. With a little red, black, and some glossy Mod Podge. I'm ready to catch them all. I glued that ball in place, and with that, it's time for the glamour shots.
Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, give it a like and please consider subscribing. If you'd like a chance to win this mini, then head on over to my Patreon. And as always, let me know in the comments what you'd like to see me make next time. Bye. Some of you may die, but it's a sacrifice I am willing to make. <laughs>